Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah allazi anzala ala abdihi alkitaba wa lam yaj'al lahu 'iwaja. Wa usalli wa sallim ala rasulihi alkarim wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Mengadap Bahaduli Amah Mulia Sri Sultan Perak Darul Radwan Sultan Nazrin Muazzuddin Shah Ampu Tuanku Satu penghormatan besar Untuk bersama-sama Meraihkan kehadiran Tuanku Yang menjadi pendorong utama Dalam majlis semua cana segar Seperti ini Dan izinkan Patik meneruskan Untuk menyampaikan Pandangan kepada rakan-rakan Timbalan Perdana Menteri Datuk Seri D. Raja Zahid Hamidi Menteri Besar Datuk Seri Syarani Ali Limaj Bishwara Kajian Negeri Tamu-tamu yang muliakan Pro Chancellor, Nap Chancellor dan keluarga Universiti Sultan Azlan Shah Sudah-sudah yang dimuliakan Alhamdulillah Kita dapat bersama-sama dan saya tentunya mendukung ikhtiar yang dimulakan sekian lama meneruskan wacana segar membicara permasalahan Islam umat kebudayaan tamadun dan boleh diserasikan dengan tuntutan semasa dalam masyarakat pelbagai kaum pelbagai agama dan dunia yang begitu rencam We cannot survive and succeed without a reasoned discourse. We are living in a world termed as post-normal times where there is chaos, com- contradictions and complexity, where there is deficit in moral values, in fact, abandonment of moral principles where politics believe in post-truth principles and devoid of ethical values, where the economy can be propelled with unbridled capitalism without care and concern for the environment or the welfare of the majority, marginalized, poor, urban poor, rural or in the rural heartland. We're living in a society where Families have quite disintegrated. So the conference, of course, to me, is timely. Not to clamor about change by reflecting on the experience of the past, to affect change in a meaningful manner, in a practical manner. I don't need to deliberate further on the issues of uh, complexities and the the uh, unprincipled attempt by both in the political arena, on the economic and the cultural sphere, where we have lost humanity. Gaza is, of course, a classic example, where in the name of democracy, you can allow and condone Total chaos, oppression of the worst kind known to mankind in recent times. So there is a challenge, therefore, to offer a viable, meaningful, effective alternative and not to be in despair. So that is, therefore, something that we need to not only engage, but strongly support. And I, of course, encourage by the presence of luminaries like Pak Yusuf Kala, who has been consistent and determined in promoting understanding and peace, even in more troublesome Muslim minority areas. My old colleague, George Yeo, you remember George, we involved Decades ago, while trying to dismantle this um, concept of, of clash of civilization promoted strongly by Samuel Huntington, we were there to promote fees of civilizations. 
civilizations can be a feast, not necessarily to be used to pro promote enmity, discord, and chaos. And uh, this reminds me of the classic work, a very small, short article by the Arab Palestinian scholar Edward Said on the clash of ignorance. It's a very effective way of debunking, uh, or, or should I say, devastating critique of that notion of class, clash of civilizations by Edward Said in his article, I think, in the Atlantic Clash of Ignorance. The problem that we confront in this world is complete ignorance. We assume that we know, but we don't. We try and attempt to deliberate most of most issues, engage in discourses out of prejudice, not out of empathy. The West, post-colonial period, must um, still retain the old precepts of the other and therefore the misunderstanding, misinformation, and rejection of the other, what we term now Islamophobia. And we need to be blamed too when we talk about civilization. That's why I commend this university for trying to attempt engage with all the others. How do you then survive and live in a society like a multiracial, multi-religious country in Malaysia and avoid discussing other religions, other cultures, other civilizations? And then demanding that the West must understand us. So I think it is a, an engagement that is required by us to get others to understand us and for us to understand them. That is why we have encouraged, other than conferences such as this, dialogue of civilization, Islam and Confucianism, because it's very relevant, not only in Malaysia, but in this region. Sayyidina Ali bin Abi Talib, talking about knowledge and learning and scholarship as lazzatul ma'rifah. There's a love for scholarship. You yearn to get the best, to understand, and appreciate as much as we have uh, understood the injunction of the Quran using a, 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 in terms of epistemology a very relevant pertinent terminology not just tolerance but lita'arafu ya ayyuhan nas Inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha wa ja'alnakum wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'ida li ta'arafu It's uh, not tolerance. It's learning from one another. It's understanding one another. It's appreciating the differences. Because the differences in terms of race or tribe or color is not of our own volition. But what was ordained? by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, my contention is that we must have the courage and conviction to continue discourse, the discourse, in the spirit of lazzatul ma'rifah. To understand and, and appreciate and realize that this is a requirement to achieve not only peace and prosperity or even sustainability through reason discourse. T.S. Eliot summarizing somewhat the same uh, message. Where is the wisdom we have lost in knowledge where is the knowledge we have lost in information no ali bin abi talib differentiate between information 
knowledge and ma'rifa. We have this mushrooming of information. We have a problem now in the government trying to uh, introduce some restrictions. Not necessarily popular because those who believe in unbridled freedom means we have every right to express our views regardless of the impact to the society. Reg even ignoring the fact that girls decided or forced, compelled to commit suicide because of this sort of harassment. So the challenge is therefore to place order and not unbridled freedom or capitalism, but to place values above the expression of individual freedom at the expense of peace and welfare of the society. We may all, may the conference live up to that spirit of Lita Arafu and Lazzatul Ma'rifa. And I, without um, the need to apologize, no apologies, would also recommend to strongly address the issue of governance. Now, I must um, state that uh, our chief guest, Your Highness, has um, impeccable academic credentials. So I don't um, welcome him just as a sultan, or that's pertinent, but more so because rarely do you have, Your Highness, someone with your impeccable academic credentials addressing the audience. I think through, because of this, that um, what you have to say and advise is very, very pertinent and relevant indeed. That our country, as in most Muslim societies, require this message of understanding, of wisdom, beyond just tolerance. To understand that what we lack, what we have lost in our societies today is the meaning of justice, deficit in values, deficit in the values, therefore poor governance, and lack of compassion. We decide what is right, what is wrong, what is just, what is not. Whether we have empathy to the plight of the poor based on interests, values, or parties, not on the principles of justice and humanity. And if you understand Muslim, the Islamic message, the Khair Ummah that we heard, it is beyond race and creed. May Allah give us strength. In front of Your Highness, I have decided to, to, to shorten my speech because uh, we are here to look forward to his uh, address. As I, and I, and I must reiterate this point without exaggeration um, that uh, we are blessed, Your Highness, with your presence and your wisdom. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.